So as you guys know, uh, just pearly things, just girly things, whatever the f her name is. Uh, I mean, she did this crazy thing that's not so crazy, I guess, when you consider uh, how these right-wing freakazoids behave online, where she did the, the Jewish question uh, meme. You know what I mean? She did like a, oh, why can't we ask? Well, you, you know what? Let's just watch the video. Here, this is what she did. Now, remember, up until this very moment, what you need to understand is she thinks Piers Morgan is her friend. Piers Morgan has had her on the show a bunch. She's appeared in a couple of debates on this show. It's called Uncensored After All. We welcome any honestly held opinions. But this week, she's facing a major backlash by posting a song titled Why Can't We Talk About the Jews, which she dedicated to far-right commentator Nick Fuentes before later. She's like, what? The camera op did her dirty, too. Or I get like, I don't know, maybe, maybe they didn't do her dirty. Maybe they were ready for it. She's like, huh? What? Why do you think this was not going to be discussed, you dumbass? Why can't we talk about the without getting kicked off of YouTube? Now I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy, but I kind of want to know why. Oh, there's all these conspiracy theories and the more they talk i think maybe they're right which one's worse ukulele apology or guitar hitler apologist uh guitar hitler apologist is definitely you know it, it, it's definitely up there i mean it's it's uh wild but it's not new like the ukulele apology is new so i think uh ukulele apology still wins because people singing about hitler uh, or or uh, people saying like incredibly white supremacist, incredibly racist shit with a guitar is not new at all. It's a classic, even uh, like Owen Benjamin did the did the super racist like that N word stole my bike song. That's like his main thing. You know what I mean? Like musical pieces from these like talentless fucking hacks that uh, just are incredibly racist for no fucking reason. Uh, for shock value is is really really old i mean dude think about what is it burzum was it burzum the, the i mean dude there's plenty of fucking white supremacist music pieces actually this one when you think about white supremacist music like this one's mid like there's also there's literally white supremacist music that kind of bangs in some w respects where if you don't know the background of what they're fuck or if you don't even understand what the fuck they're saying you know what i mean yeah varg is like an actual musician and a murderer and a Nazi, really interesting guy in general. <laughs> anyway, let's let's continue. Well, Pearl joins me now, along with the New York uh, author and founder of End Jew Hatred, Brooke Goldstein, over in the States. All right, Pearl, you've come on the show a couple of times, right? We've had some spirited debates about mm -hmm. feminism and stuff like that, and I thought you've made some good points and it's got lots of traction. Then I wake up the other day and I see this thing that's trending involving you doing this song. I couldn't really believe what I was watching. I didn't know... <laughs> Why, why did you find, you find it funny? Huh? Did you find, you find it funny? Huh? That's a good, that's good response. You deleted it. You obviously thought you shouldn't have posted it. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? Genuine uh, question. <laughs> I mean, the point was more about cancel culture and people getting kicked off of social media if you finished the song. Mm. Oh, dude, that's such a good point to make. It's so funny. What a unique point to make. No one has ever made a point about cancel culture and people getting kicked off of social media before. So I'm really glad that she's brave enough to make that point in this way. No, idiot. That's not the point. Everybody fucking talks about cancel culture on television just like you are. There's a difference between talking about cancel culture and being like, what's up with the what, what's up with Jewish people and, and Hitler? Like, which she agreed with at the end of the song. So like, what do you mean you know what you were doing why is she so bad at misogyny i know well because she's a woman actually that's a lie women are so fucking good at misogyny women are better at misogyny sometimes than uh, in many respects than men she's just really bad in general women can be incredible at misogyny there was a there was a tweet i saw the other day where it was like about the casting director 
who said like we casted Yennefer on Witcher in a way to challenge uh, beauty expectations and beauty standards and i was like god damn and then someone someone literally quote tweeted it and was like women are so much more brutal and so much better than men at doing misogyny uh when they want to it is a insane thing to fucking say why would you ever say that first of all she's really pretty like why did you even yeah casting director sophie holland says anya Chalotra's casting as Yennefer of Vengerberg in a Netflix adaptation of Witcher was intended to challenge beauty standards. Yeah, oh yeah, here it is. It's the this tweet. Women are so much better at misogyny than men. That that's just like a wild thing to come out of your mouth, dude. You were just like, yeah, guys, this super hot woman that we casted was a big challenge for us because she's Indian. <laughs> like what? She's super hot. What are you saying? She's literally just conventionally attractive. By Western beauty standards, too. Like, what the fuck? What are we doing here? All right, let's get back to it this troll. It was more All about, right. like, you can't talk about this topic without being canceled by the left and the right. I don't really have a strong opinion either way. It, it was kind of just like tongue. Wait, what do, what do you mean? You don't have a strong opinion on Jewish people dominating media either way and, like, whether or not Hitler was right to say what he said? Is that what you just said? Because that's an insane thing to say. You might, you might as well just say you have a strong opinion that leans on the Hitler side at that point. It's one of those things. There's two issues that are taught throughout history. You don't usually prescribe uh, normative value-based uh, definitions to, to certain things that happen in history, right? And especially as time passes and we move away, we have a much broader understanding of what happened. That's why we don't treat Genghis Khan in the same way that we treat like historical figures from uh, history that's closer to our time right but there's two issues that you just don't teach like that you don't just say is is uh you you do have uh, a a normative uh, way of teaching uh, two things throughout history slavery which is bad and nazis which is bad that's it it's like super easy you don't have to fucking hand it to the nazis and you don't have to hand it to the slavers it's it's so odd it's just bad it's bad. Did she run out of red pill material? Why do they always go in this direction? Every red pillar is literally just like sitting. They're always sitting at home festering, just trying to uh, you're trying to talk about how much they love Hitler. And also on top of that, trying to talk about how much they think 16 year olds are fuckable. Which Pearl did that as well, by the way. She came out of the gate swinging, did the Nazi thing, and then immediately followed that up with a good old-fashioned pedophilia moment. In public, she posted, she said, 16-year-olds are way more attractive than 26-year-olds. That's what she said. Why would you do that? 16-year-old chicks are hotter than 26-year-old chicks. Like, an insane thing to say. The only person that is allowed to say this is a 16-year-old. You are not a 16-year-old. Don't say that. What the fuck are you saying? Are you 16? And then also, like, people aren't even embarrassed to fucking be like, oh, this is a good tweet. I'm going to like it. You know what I mean? What, what the fuck's going on? The funny part? Yeah, I, I think it's supposed to be self-deprecating. She hates herself. I, we know that by now, I think. She despises herself. She, is, she has so much self-hatred. I mean, her entire point of view revolves around uh revolves around being a a unlikable ghoul who, who hates women like that's her whole shtick you know what i mean it wasn't dedicated to anyone i don't know why they say that but that's not true i mean nick fuentes <laughs> is a white supremacist he's a, a holocaust denier uh, -huh. uh he said afterwards that uh, you had dropped a diss track on the jews <laughs> um which he clearly took to be something which was you know, mocking Jewish people, talking about, I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy, but I want to know why. What, what do you well, want to know why? Well, it was more like, why can't we talk about it? It, it wasn't like yeah, one way about the more the conspiracy other. theories you've heard about Hitler and the Holocaust, I'm, presumably. I'm a fan of conspiracy theory. Like, you know, people think I'm part of the CIA. There's a whole conspiracy thing online. Okay, I'm going to be honest, dude. I don't think anybody thinks she's a part of the CIA. Okay, nobody thinks that. I think the whole podcasters and YouTubers are part of the CIA narrative is just like all schizo posting uh, with varying degrees, right? I don't even think those guys are hallucinating this person being a part of the CIA. Because like, god damn, if the CIA is, is uh, you know, working with this fucking loser, holy shit, they've fallen so far. No, I'm not 
for like silencing it either way. The point of the song isn't like I really have an opinion on the matter. It's more, I don't think we should ban people off of social media. So far so that I don't even, like I think it should be illegal to ban anybody off of social media unless they're inciting violence. Dude, this is so funny. Well, first of all, yeah, when you're doing Nazi conspiracies, you are inciting violence. That's what the Nazis did. You want more people to become Nazis. That's your goal. Uh, but regardless, 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 like this is an argument that has been played out so many fucking times, dude. This cycle needs to die out. I hate it. And it's been played out by people who are like more charismatic than her, which is not, you know, saying much, obviously. And people who are even more, even smarter than her, which is again, not saying much, obviously of like, why can't we just talk about Nazi stuff openly? Freedom of speech. You shouldn't be able to get fucking uh, uh, taken out of uh, social media spaces uh, uh, unless you're inciting violence. Like, what the fuck? I've heard this argument. It was a big cycle during Gamergate. Uh, it was a big cycle leading up to Donald Trump's uh, election uh, in, like, 2014, 2015, 2016. And it died out a little bit because, like, it got to the climax where, you know, there were people who were out and about. They were white supremacists. They were Nazis. And they felt comfortable going around and protesting in broad daylight without masks. And we saw what happened. We saw what fucking happened, and then people inevitably were like, oh, oh, this is terrible. Put this shit back in the fucking jar, okay? That was the point of the song. Um, I'm not really... It, it was more like tongue-in-cheek. But just to be clear, what are the conspiracy theories surrounding Hitler, which you feel I the more you hear them, the more well, you're interested in them? Well, I don't know, because I can't hear them. Huh? <laughs> I don't well, you know, know the ones. You know the ones that Nick Fuentes... Well, I wasn't with. even talking about Nick. I was thinking of Ye, to be honest. I don't know why they put that Nick was the inspiration for that song. I was thinking of Ye. You know what the most ironic thing is? She's a woman living under the patriarchy. And because she's not hot and doesn't meet the muster as an object of sexual desire. She literally is not even getting enough clout from the side that's supposed to elevate her. So she is basically turned around and tried to do like low-hanging fruit, bottom-of-the-barrel misogyny, which didn't work. Listen, the unfortunate reality is that in a world that Pearl wants to live in, she can't thrive or survive. Like, there were better versions of Pearl that came out before her and even they got fucking owned inevitably because the inherent contradictions of being like uh, being one step removed from the person in positions of power while simultaneously advocating for further marginalization for your own uh, subgroup is always going to end up harming you look no further than the likes of faith goldie and lauren southern both were fitting western beauty standards significantly better than pearl and that's why they popped off they popped off and ultimately the own inherent contradictions trapped inside of ultranationalist and fascist movements ended up harming them because you're still a woman at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Remember that article that came out where yeah, it was like, nah. trad women are frustrated that the alt-right movement is not representing them well. And it's like, yeah, no shit, dog. Of course that's not happening. Hassan, what is the association between who Ruth Bader Ginsburg was and women in positions of real power and hotness? What do you mean I'm so confused by you today? I'm saying that if you want to run the gamut of misogynistic commentary, you got to look like a Fox News uh, pinup doll. You cannot get uh, elevated into a position of power in misogynistic circles if you do not fit the profile of, uh, of what is a, a, a breedable... Object of sexual desire. She said this exact thing about herself. This isn't even your take. Yeah, exactly. Ultimately, in order to be a Nazi, a successful Nazi, you have to be a white man, okay? Because after a certain point, everyone's going to go, why are you talking? You're a woman. Shouldn't you be shutting the fuck up as a woman? Barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? Being a femcel on the right will only take you so far. Um, you are aware of the big backlash to this and the deep upset from the Jewish community. I certainly am now. I just posted that song and I woke up and I was like, article, article, article. I was like, golly. Right, but are you sorry? crazy. Oh, golly. Everyone's paying attention to me. Oh, golly. I can't believe people are upset at the thing that I did that was a low effort way to try and get everybody paying attention to me and upset at me. I can't believe it worked that well. Golly. So crazy. I can't believe it, dude. It's so weird how that happened, right? The thing that you, you wanted to happen, which is why you said those things. So odd how that works. I am not speaking one way or the other about the issues. My question is, why are we canceled about talk for talking 
about certain topics. So you would allow Holocaust deniers to have space on social media to promote Holocaust denial to millions of people. You have two million people who subscribe mm-hmm. to your YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. That's a big audience well, of people. I'm not, I'm not at two million yet. I'd like to be. Right, but you have a lot of people that... <laughs> The one thing I do appreciate in this situation is that it gets like people who are otherwise absolutely free speech absolutist in every other circumstance to completely buckle on their supposedly infallible position of free speech absolutism the moment that Holocaust denial shows up. It's a good thing. I wish they had that same energy for like, I don't know, uh, defending the Confederacy or anything like that. Like Piers Morgan is the type of dude who 1,000% one million percent is like in other circumstances going cancel culture cancel cultures come to the uk uh, unbearable unbelievable what is the conversation about hitler and conspiracy theories and the holocaust that you want to have i don't want to have any conversation my lane is feminism that's what well, you're I'm singing about, about adolf hitler can i can i, can I finish yeah, but you are singing about okay, hitler okay okay so you do want to have that conversation i want anybody that wants to speak on social media to be able to speak about what they want to talk about including holocaust without denial. getting banned whatever they want to talk about including holocaust denial if they want to talk about that as long as they're not inciting violence i think people of course they're inciting I mean, violence they're inciting look a look hatred it, i think that Jewish Social. Now we have corporations censoring what can and cannot be said. And I think that's wrong. I think that should be illegal. Well, let me bring in Brooke, uh, uh, who's been listening to this. Brooke, I don't think Pearl quite understands why the wording of this song, which she deleted, to be clear, so obviously realised this had not played out maybe the way she hoped. The offence is caused to the Jewish community. Why was it so offensive? What you pointed out is that we're really facing a crisis of societal conscience where someone like Pearl, who engages in hate speech, and actually the irony is she's complaining about being canceled, and yet she's on your platform. She has millions of viewers on the internet and on social media, and she's complaining about being canceled. The crisis is that this is what is profitable now. This clickbait, this type of racial incitement is profitable on the internet. And you know, I'm sitting here, I'm listening to Pearl. I I don't know if she's just, plain stupid, or she's actually quite intelligent and knows that what she's doing is so sensational that it's going to make her a lot of money. But I want to say one thing, Pearl will disappear. She will disappear like many others before her because this is something that's just a moment in time. She's like a train wreck. It's like a car crash. You know, for example, you can't, you know, you shouldn't be looking at it, but you can't take your eyes off it. This is such a slam dunk, dude. Oftentimes, it's also, like, the worst people that get uh, uplifted here, like this woman. The Lawfare Project is an American nonprofit think tank and litigation fund that works to protect the human and civil rights of Jewish and pro-Israel communities worldwide. The project funds legal actions to protect free speech and civil rights by challenging anti-Semitism and discrimination against Jews. It's the world's only international pro-Israel litigation fund. What the fuck? Like, you got the ADL. Why the fuck do they need this? I like that they're like, they're not just saying anti-Semitism, but also pro-Israel. Getting sued because I said the Israeli apartheid state is brutal is, is fun. You know what I mean? And see what her opinions are. She thinks women shouldn't vote. Women shouldn't based, have the right to divorce. She based, thinks that women based, shouldn't be able to yes. work. I can't watch the rest of this. This is so fucking boring. Let's, let's get back to reacts.